Hello and welcome to Total Football Analysis. Today we will take a closer look at Eric Ten Hag and his Ajax philosophy. The Dutch coach could form the young team of Ajax into a competitive Champions League side. Therefore, Eric Ten Hag utilized several tactical concepts which lent Ajax their dominant style of play. Under Ten Hag, Ajax set up in a 4-3-3 system, but instead of playing with a single pivot, Ajax deploy a double pivot and one central offensive midfielder in front of that. Their strongest lineup includes Frankie de Jong and Lasse Schöne in defensive midfield and Donny van de Beek on the playmaker position. Their attacking trio consists of striker Dujan Tadic and wingers David Neres as well as Hakim Ziyech. Wide forwards Neres and Ziyech like to tuck inside to attack down the half spaces. Therewith Ajax attacking phase is rather centrally focused. However, if the opposition can close down the center of the pitch, Ajax attack down the left flank as right winger Ziyech acts as an inverted winger and prefers to use his left foot to cut inside. Left wide forward Neres on the other hand can also occupy the flank and use his stronger left foot in a wide area. At times, playmaker van de Beek also takes up a higher position next to Dujan Tadic. This provides depth and enables either of the two to drop into space between the lines whenever Ajax get the chance to play line breaking passes. Ajax fullbacks provide width during the attacking phase, while their double pivot attempts to provide diagonal passing lanes in the center and position themselves on different lines. Under Eric Ten Hag, Ajax often utilize the advantages of a back three in the build-up. One of their double pivot drops either next to or between the two central defenders. Firstly, this creates diagonal passing lanes to the fullbacks who can move high up the line. Secondly, as most sides only provide a maximum of two players within the first line of press, Ajax create a numerical advantage. In midfield, the central players avoid dropping too deep to receive. Instead, they try to receive the ball and once being marked, move higher up the pitch again. This creates space behind the opposition first line of press and enables Ajax back three to carry the ball forward once they got behind the first pressing line. While Lasse Schöne mostly drops between the center backs, Frankie de Jong prefers to drop into the left back position. From there, the Dutch midfielder can play diagonal passes or diagonally dribble into the most important area of Ajax play, the center of the pitch. Donny van de Beek is probably the most overlooked player at Ajax at the moment. The Dutch midfielder perfectly fits into Ten Hag's system as he is extremely good in creating space for his teammates as well as recognizing and utilizing free space. Especially in the last third, van de Beek is difficult to defend since he is constantly moving and taking up new positions. Often van de Beek and central attacker Tadic create gaps for each other. One of both is usually positioned on the last line and tends to drift towards one side of the pitch. The other one meanwhile starts a run from an area between the lines into the gap between the opposition defenders. With this concept Ajax regularly get behind the opposition backline. Furthermore the two offensive men like to interchange positions. Whenever the Serbian attacker drops in order to receive the ball, Van de Beek drags away the backline with a deep run and takes over the striker position. One of the biggest strengths of Ajax under Ten Hag is their attacking fluidity. A typical movement of Ajax offensive players is that they drop diagonally into space between the lines. But before they get in front of the opposition midfield line, they turn and start a diagonal forward run. With their regular forward runs, Ajax maintain depth and exploit any gaps within the opposition backline. The fluidity means that it is not always the same player executing these movements. Instead, all attackers and midfielders are constantly moving and trying to create space. Moreover, they also interchange positions. Since all three attackers are capable of attacking through the center, half spaces or down the flank, they can confuse the opposition defense with rotational movements. Out of possession, Ajax attempt to regain possession. Therefore, Ten Hag's side use a quick counter pressing and transition moments as well as a high press and clear possession phases of the opposition. To counter press, Ajax use their narrow attacking shape and shift towards the ball as quickly as possible. As several players are positioned close to the ball usually, the distances are short and the opponent has only a little time to play out of the counter pressing. Their high press is also based on the reduction of space offered for the opposition. Ajax attacking department guides the opposition towards one side of the pitch where they shut down every single passing option. Therefore the ball for winger often uses his cover shadow to prevent the opposition to switch play. Ajax usually possess enough players up front to execute a space oriented press in one quarter of the pitch. That way Ten Hag's team can force many opponents to play long balls. With their double pivot and at least three players of the back line, Ajax are well prepared for winning first and second balls. As a result, they can often sustain possession after long balls. 
All in all, Eric Ten Hag has successfully established an attractive style of play at Ajax. The attacking fluidity and short pass combination play, paired with an active defending approach, has posed problems for many top teams.